here at GIT, the guitar program at MI, and I'm sitting with one of the most respected rock fusion guitarists in the world. He's also an instructor here, Mr. Scott Henderson. And we thought actually today we'd kind of take you in the walls here at MI and show you some of the stuff that he might teach. And we thought we'd start actually with something that pretty much most guitar players, whether you're beginning or you've been playing 20 years, you probably use it a lot, the pentatonic shape. Believe it or not, a lot of what you just saw was kind of a B minor pentatonic shape, moving it around. What's the basic shape, just to remind everybody? What everybody knows the shape. What people don't know is that, is that you can move that shape to uh, different areas and get different sounds. Over B minor, you can play, you can play this shape. Or you can take that up a whole step and play it here. So you're playing the same exact shape. Same exact shape, but, but you just get a series, different series of, of sounds. So you're starting on the ninth fret there, the same shape that yeah. was on the seventh fret, and moving it up a whole step to the ninth fret. The technical reason for that is because the notes in the B minor pentatonic scale come from the A major scale. And these pentatonic shapes, the B minor pentatonic shape, the C sharp minor pentatonic shape and the F sharp minor pentatonic shape all contain notes from the A major scale. So, so if you want to look at it in more simple terms, anytime you have a minor chord and you're playing minor pentatonic, you can go up a major second to C sharp in this case, or up a fifth to F sharp, and they all so and they sound completely different. This one sounds like this. This one sounds like this. And this sounds like this. And they all have a different, look, a little bit of a different flavor because they're using different notes from the scale. Well, let's hear a little bit more of that. Just kind of go back and forth between yeah. those three positions. In fact, what I'll do is I'll play maybe the same lick. I'll just play it in different places. Like I could play a simple, simple, simple lick like this. And I'll play it here. And I'll play it here. So they all sound a little bit different. If I do... Here's a regular position. And this... thing in those three different positions and you get three different sounds. Adds a lot of color to your play. Very cool. Now, you know, another thing that I notice you do a lot is <coughs> you might take the same five notes that we're talking about here, but you'll group them in rhythmic ways without leaving 4-4, four, four, but group them in ways that make it more interesting. Yeah, you can put fives over four, sevens over four. If you take a lick like this, I think I learned this from John Schofield way back on from the Star People album on Miles Davis. This is, and I was a kid when that record was was, was out, it was like, wow, what's that lick? And it's so simple, it's just a lick like, that goes like this. Now normally that would be in four. And what I'm doing is leaving a rest at the end, like one, two, three, four, well, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And instead of leaving a rest, I'm going to get rid of the rest and just play it in seven, like Here, this. Your metronome. Three, four. So it turns around, you know. So you, so it so it sort of sounds like this. Of 
course, you can do them. And here. Sorry, do it here. Or you can skip strings and maybe do it like this. And all I'm doing now is skipping over the B string and playing just the E string and the G string. And I can also do that on the B string and the D string. Or I can do it on the G string and the A string. And the B, lastly the D string and the E string in the other position. So you end up with a wide variety of sounds like this. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a nice little tool. I mean, if you do it too much, it sounds too patterny, but if you just throw a little piece of it here and there, most of the stuff that any kind of rhythmic stuff you do, you don't do it for very long. You just do it enough just to gain a little bit of attention and then you move on to something else. But all these little rhythmic tricks help. Um, some of these yeah. things that I do like, uh, so here's an interesting lick. I could go. And all that is is sevens. Yeah. Sevens over four. If you count the lick like this, I have to count it in seven. You be my guy, and I'll just say one, two, three, four, and you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You'll see what happens. One, two, three, four. So the lick is actually in seven, but if the you put sound, it over four... Yeah, the song is in four, you're playing it yeah. over a rhythm section that's... It backing. twists it around. Another thing you can do is do simple things like play it... Like, say if you have a triplet, it's a very simple bend like this. It's just a simple triplet with three notes, okay? Now, if you play any one of those notes twice... Let's take this note and play it twice. It will turn around and be in a different place. So instead of being like this, so you can turn it around you're like that. Add, well, you're just adding it once in a while, adding an extra right. note. Now it's back where it was. I turned it around three times. It was the first way, I added a note, it was the second way, I added that note, it was the third way. And uh, yeah, So you're doing the triplet, just, and then every once in a while, instead of just doing the same old cliched triplet, add an extra pulse and it shifts the whole exactly. thing over without changing the time. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Before we wrap up, I was thinking that perhaps we could uh, zoom in a little bit on your right hand technique, on, on your bar, and how you uh, yeah, attack some of these notes with the bar. The bar thing is, is pretty simple. Um, Mostly I use it just to, to dive into a note, like, I, I really love slide guitar, so I've always loved slide guitar players, and basically I want to be one, but I suck at it, so, <laughs> so this is a way for me to sound like a slide guitar. So I slide into a note, I start with the bar down when I play the note. So yeah, looking at how you use the bar, I noticed a lot of times when you scoop into a note like that, you actually don't use your pick, but you use one of your... Fretting hand, I mean, your picking hand fingers to pluck the note. Yeah, I mean, you get a fatter tone when you use your fingers. I, I usually use my pick when I'm doing anything fast, and if I if I want to play something slow and have it have the fattest tone possible, I'll use my fingers. So let's demonstrate so, a little bit of that. Um, what I'm doing, you know, basically, I've got the pick here, but I'll just use my third finger. I can't really afford to let go of the pick because sooner or later I'm going to have to play some swing lines or something that's that I need to pick, but but. You know, when I do slow stuff, just something. Sometimes you use the bar on two notes at once, yeah. like a... Yeah. Or something like this. And I use the bar to sweep into notes, or I, I would say glide into notes. I also use the notes, instead of playing a lick like this, 
what I'll do is I'll play this note, bend down to the next note, and then release it when I play the next, the next note on the next string. So you can do this kind of Jeff Beck lick. The other thing, of course, is just nice vibrato on chords. And then I do this kind of Indian stuff. And you never really know whether I'm doing it. Sometimes I do it with my fingers like this. Or sometimes the bar, and it sounds two different ways. set up so it goes up of maybe a half step? Actually, I have it set up so that it goes up a major third on the G string. If you play like a harmonic here, yeah. it actually needs to be tuned up because it's not quite making the major third. Yes, it did. Actually, I just didn't pull it far enough. So that's how I have it set up. Most and, people uh, who do that to their Strat or similar guitars, such as your Sewer guitar, their guitar will be out of tune for a week. How do you manage that? Actually, uh, there are some tricks. Um, actually, it will stay in tune better if it is floating. But you have to do some things that are a little bit heavy, maybe for some guys. Maybe they'd want to take it to a guitar guy to have it done. But one of the things they do at Sur is they take the holes on the plate and they drill them a little, a drill bit size bigger, or maybe even two drill bit size bigger, so that the bridge is very loose because that's the main uh, fault of the fender bridges is that the hole is too small and the screw catches on the edge of the hole and makes it go out of tune. And it's a very simple matter just You're to drill the holes six out. Right the, six, the six holes yeah. in the plate, just drill them bigger. The nut, a, this has just got up. graphite. Well, first of all, if you don't have a guitar that's well made, if, 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 your, if your string is in a perfect straight line from the bridge to the edge of the tuning key, it's never going to stay in tune because there's going to be pressure on the side of the nut and it's not going to stay in tune. But a good guitar, a good Fender or a good Sir or whatever, you're going to have a nice straight line right down all the way down to the bridge and that way if you just put a little graphite powder in the nut, it's going to stay in tune. And um, if it floats, if it's, it actually stays in tune better than if you have the, the, the uh, plate resting against the body because then it has nowhere to go back to. One of the cool things about a Strat, it's still pretty good in tune. If I go all the way down here, well it's actually still in tune but the G string went a little bit out. But if I do this, that usually knocks it back in. Yeah, so it's, it stays in tune pretty well and, and a large part is due to the fact that the holes are bigger in the plate. That's one of the biggest things. <clears throat> Scott, I want to thank you very much for sitting down with us, and I think that anyone Pleasure. who's watching this, you'll see that even if it's just five notes, there are a million ways to approach them with the right mojo, all these different techniques, moving it around. You can have a ball with those things. And Definitely. Take it to the moon, and it can last you a lifetime. Why don't you take us out with some more of the old pentatonic stuff? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.